Hello and welcome to another episode of Travel Stories with Mosh, the first travel podcast in the Middle East. So if you love the world around you and you love exploring different landscapes, cultures, cuisines and cities, then you are in the right place because here every week I'll be talking to an incredible travel enthusiast who will take us on a fascinating journey around the world by sharing their travel stories. On the podcast today, I am joined by a travel couple who have together traveled to 61 countries and six continents. They are engineers by profession, but travelers by passion. I'm so delighted to be joined by one of UAE's very popular travel influencers, Delaine and Jackson. Thank you so much to joining, for joining me on the podcast today and uh, really looking forward to all the journeys that you both are going to take us to. So tell me, how did this whole travel influencer bit started for both of you? I know you've been traveling for a while, but let's start with the travel influencer bit. Okay, so our first trip was in uh, 2010 when we uh, visited Switzerland and it was a... Um, escorted tour mm -hmm. so while traveling around in switzerland and geneva lausanne uh, lucerne and engelberg and all we realized that we want to keep doing this mm -hmm. and explore more countries and continents and uh, document them so that uh, other travelers could get um, uh, pulled into this kind of right. environment yeah. and know more about it, seeing that there's a world outside mm -hmm. uh, their comfort zone and they can go explore and talk to other like-minded people to get more information. So it just pretty much started very, it happened organically, you would say. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Like I said in my introduction, you've traveled to 61 countries together. Yeah. So out of all this, of course, I'm going to come to the most important question to begin the podcast. Where will you be taking us on a journey today? Okay, so I, I'll be taking you to um, Rovaniemi. Okay. It's uh, in uh, Finland. Mm -hmm. It's Finland. the north of Finland. So it's a part of uh, a North Lapland, mm -hmm. uh, Finnish, Finnish Lapland, Lapland, which is in the north. And um, it's basically the hometown, the official hometown of Santa Claus. Okay. Okay. So yes. the moment you land in the airport, it'll be like, welcome to the hometown of Santa Claus. And then you. So this is with or without Christmas season? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you have so it's Christmas any time of any the year when you go yeah, yeah. there. And you really. have you have Santa at the airport and elves at the airport. Right. So how wonderful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you have a like so once you go the main thing about Rovaniemi is like a lot of countries lie on the Arctic Circle, but Rovaniemi is the only place where you can actually cross the Arctic Circle. Mm. So that's so you one reach thing. the Santa Claus village and then there's a point which shows the temperature and the Arctic uh, line, uh, circle through. line passing yeah, through. You can so pass. you can cross, take pictures and tell I've just crossed the Arctic, Arctic line. Arctic, okay. Yeah, so and then you have reindeer rides there. You, have, you can see reindeer. Then you can even eat reindeer. They have reindeer burgers as well. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, we couldn't see the northern lights, but mm. if you're lucky, you can see the northern lights as well in Rovaniemi. So it's got a bit of everything, you know. So what's so special about uh, the place apart from the fact that it's, you know, the home of Santa Claus? Why would you, you know, recommend this place? And what are the other things that, you know, you can go? It's, is it just the vibe and this whole, you know, Christmassy feeling and just, you know, to know that, you know, Santa Claus actually kind of originated from there? Like, what is it really? which is so very interesting over there first if you hear about santa claus it's like a myth or anything but mm. then when you visit this place it's so magical mm. and uh, you actually uh, get to meet santa claus there's mm -hmm. a meet and greet mm -hmm. and then which no, is the appointed yes. santa claus yes. really yes. yeah yes. okay and plus uh, you have uh, in that uh, place rovanaimi you have uh, other uh, things which you can do is like you can stay in a Arctic uh, hotel, mm -hmm. which is built by igloos, mm -hmm. and then um, covered with northern, lights. Yeah, northern, northern lights, lights from that. So it's okay. uh, transparent. And then they send you an alert saying uh, uh, we have a strong um, uh, Aurora. the, Auroras. Yeah. Uh, it's like a bubble hotel. Yeah, yeah bubble hotel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then made of uh, this thing and you can view the northern lights or from your hotel room we actually yeah. got out, out of the hotel at night and you know it was like uh, i think around minus 15 degrees okay we're like let's just go near the bridge and maybe see see maybe whether we, we have some luck it. with the lights and mm -hmm. we wore this 
people are like you know what is fools taking their hotel blankets okay yeah. we wrapped ourselves and we went under a bridge and we looked up and there was nothing nothing yes. so it was okay. like bad like we couldn't see we were there for like three days and we couldn't see anything but with the northern lights you can't really tell yeah. i mean you that, might the see thing, them yeah. you might not see them but yeah. uh, even even so it was like completely worth it as yeah. a journey for yeah. you yeah and then plus in this um you can uh, do a reindeer uh, rides mm. husky uh, rides husky rides snowmobile. plus snowmobile and snowmobile is equipped with a heater so that you can still enjoy while warming up your so it's a fun place to yeah. go yes. to and experience this whole christmasy vibe and you get and to meet santa claus and in winter it's really magical because it's all snow and yeah. it's a uh, You see the street decorated covered with snow, decorated. And, uh, yeah. It's really nice. So it's fun for kids as well as for yes, adults. Yes, definitely. Yes, yes. At the same time, and like you said, you know, you can go at any time of the year. Yeah, it doesn't and, matter. Yeah. But then, if you want to enjoy snow, you have to start from from October uh, at least. Yeah, October almost till March, or and then uh, that's when you'll get maximum snow. You'll get those vibes of. So it's winter. a special place, you yes. would say, yeah. because yes. very definitely. different from other places. Yes, yeah. unique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have Rovan Amy in yeah. Finland, which. Um, for you guys is special because of so many uh, special and fun things that you did but you know while you started uh, your traveling you you of course started your traveling journey um, around 2010 2011 you didn't think that this would kind of become kind of yeah. you know a part time job for you um you know along with traveling and experiencing the world but as you were growing up or in 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 the journey of life yeah. uh, was there any special place that struck with you and you know that kind of called out to you and said to you that hey you know i love traveling i want to keep doing this whether i travel once a year or twice a year but you know something that kind of told you in your traveling life um that it, made you kind of feel that you love travel it it wouldn't be a place really but i yeah, i would always yeah it doesn't have to be a place i would always yeah. be excited to you know even though it was india like every year mm. for a month i would always be excited to go on a plane and yeah. the the plain food and the window seats those things were really like you know the whole process, process was exciting yeah. for yeah, that you that process was exciting yeah. yeah yeah and for you for me uh, i would say my first trip like a uh, solo trip with yeah. my friends uh, that got me into a, a mood to start traveling that uh, keep aside some uh, amount of money and then save up and then use it for travel so that was go? my first trip was uh, to thailand okay. uh, with my friends yeah. so you know 61 countries so far so which would you say is your like all time favorite destination and why japan yeah japan, japan is special japan. we were monitoring the sakura or cherry blossom yeah. season oh, yeah. and seeing where we can get the maximum uh, uh, or full bloom what they call it yeah and then uh why japan it's so they're it's living it's a futuristic, yes, futuristic uh, country career. okay yeah. they have like a machine for like a venting machine for everything like for a for charges yeah. for for anything basically and even have you seen their toilets yeah their toilets are you know it's like it's yeah. different they I have know. like it's like you don't want to yeah, get out exactly. of the toilet they have music they have like heated <laughs> yeah. seats yeah. it's cold outside and the people there are really really oh very nice oh my god nice. that they, is they They can't speak English. They can't speak English, but, but they're, they're so really nice. very nice. Yeah. But their I hospitality, keep, yeah. and Amazing. then uh, uh, it's like they just bow down. Even when a train comes in and stops at their stop, they bow down. But what was your favorite uh, part of Japan? I think for me, it was being able to see the cherry blossoms. Mm-hmm. But what was your favorite uh, city or place? I would say Osaka, mm-hmm. uh, because when you uh, get into the um, the, the city food? center, it's you'll go crazy with all the food, food things in yeah. it there's another place i could say in tokyo where which is known for its um uh video game a- a- akibahara akibahara yeah, yeah. 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 akibahara that was yeah. that was something yeah so of course you know now japan's um, i think we can just go on talking about japan yes. <laughs> it's one of my favorite <laughs> places as well but you know tell me about some um travel bloopers because we obviously always want to remember the good parts but yeah. you know there are things happen when we travel you know anything that has happened which we can call a travel blooper yeah uruguay would be that place which i could uh, really? say but it, it, it's place, not a, it's yeah. not a this thing it's not a bad place or anything yeah. but we had a couple of we loved uruguay but mm. then we had a couple of uh, mishaps though in between we landed in argentina and okay. then we took a ferry, took a ferry. Yeah. from buenos aires to colonia, colonia del colonia, sacramento, yeah. Yeah. Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah. so i'm there at the counter jackson's 
already like he's already Stamped checked him and this lady is at the counter she's looking at my passport she's like look you know i'm like what what's going on and then finally jason comes to my side and he's like uh, this what's is happening? what is like what's happening and they have no idea where abu dhabi is and he's like your is he's like your embassy in abu dhabi stamp, stamp this uh, this thing yeah. and then she goes inside and then two of them come outside and everyone's checking my passport like where is this abu dhabi yeah, and where like, i it was it no was in the morning it was yeah. i think we took the uh, because we like to travel early you know to get to make the most, most of the day of it. yeah so she's looking at her passport my passport and she's like and finally like after 45 minutes she stamps it okay it but once we got to like colonia it was a really nice place yeah. we hired a buggy and yeah. we roamed around Electric the place vehicle. i enjoyed it yeah, so place. much I and mean, they have really nice uh, meats there yes yeah so meats. even the wine is very the yeah. asado yeah. which yeah. is also the brazilian wine but even the, their wines are very yeah, good because they have very like good the, wineries yeah, we had like a a liter of wine and yes. different cuts of meat for only like 35 dirhams you mm. know so it's a very affordable place yeah. and it's a beautiful place and it's beautiful and colonia is really yeah. beautiful yeah. it was a nice experience people were nice it's like you can't um, just a little bit hitch but yeah. also they're so far away yes and just a little you know corner of the world really and they do not have very many um, visitors yes. exactly so, you know for them to yeah. react the way they did with you um you know it's, it's not very surprising yeah it's uh, like- but yeah of course you know these are good stories like i had i did not have any of that i had great experiences but then in uruguay and then you all had this experiences so yeah. you know <laughs> it's like that when you travel right things yes. happen yeah. but yes. um yeah but would you go back to uruguay if you had to definitely right? yeah definitely yeah so what would be like you know your hidden gem i mean you've been traveling so much what according to you is your hidden gem so there's this place uh, called bentang cave mm-hmm. in um uh, hermanus uh, western south cape south, south africa, africa. um uh, which not many know of it uh, unless you're doing a road trip so we parked our car and y- you won't see it's like uh, sea view and then after that uh, there was a small sign showing there's a restaurant so the name to. of a restaurant in yes. hermanus yeah yes. it's called bentang's Bint- cave okay. so the cave is basically located under the road so you, if you're on the on top you don't know it's a cave you know how, it's f- how fascinating because yeah. i've been to hermanus i don't know about this okay. restaurant and, so and yeah another fact about this is that's the only cave which is uh, famous for its land based uh, whale watching site oh. so you sit and have your burgers or your seafood yeah. and you can see uh, all different kinds of oh. whales behind. so this particular restaurant is really a hidden gem then in yes. hermanus yeah. yeah so you have to be there before october because yeah. i think that's the time when these yeah. whales are migrating because they're being tan scale yeah. in hermanus yes. Yes. and it's the only perhaps land based yeah. uh, whale, whale watching, watching yeah. point in the world yeah. yes. wow that's really fascinating now because we are uh talking about food uh let's talk about a food a little more okay. and uh, <laughs> if you could travel around the world uh in a day uh where would you want to have your breakfast lunch and dinner okay so for breakfast uh we probably go to the dresden christmas market okay go to dresden for breakfast yes dresden christmas market wow <laughs> yeah. okay so i think they open around 9ish something like or that 10, yeah, and yeah. 9 or 10 in the morning and they have like they have i think maybe 500 stalls of uh, food and uh, handicrafts and everything and in the old town in the old town in the yeah old town. in the old town so they have what they have grilled meats they have pretzels hot wine which is acceptable to have during yeah, you know mulled, like, wine. mulled wine exactly yeah. and hot chocolates I and would never yeah. think of dresden as a foodie yeah, uh, destination amazing So, so dressed in for yeah. breakfast then yeah, for okay breakfast, yeah. and then for lunch i'll take you to istanbul turkey mm. where you can have a, a specialty which is served near galata tower okay uh, which is called kokoreç it's um, a unique kind of sandwich which they serve there have you tried so it's here? made out of uh, sheep intestine which is not so good to hear when people talk about wow, it wow okay and then they mix it with the uh, uh, a little bit of meat fat and the sheep intestine uh, it looks like a big kebab which is rolled like a shawarma grilled like a shawarma and they but, like yeah. slice it and this way what's sli- it called kokoreç kokoreç okay yeah. yeah. and they put it in a bread uh, no they uh, cut it a cut a slice of this uh, uh, meat loaf i can say and mm. then uh, chop it up put in some spices and they put it in a um, roll bread and serve it and uh, 
give it Ooh. to you and then that flavor is uh, amazing the guy yeah. didn't the guy was worried for us he's yes, like, he like are you okay can you try this thing we're <laughs> but like no yeah. i have we are okay because i've, I've yeah, done some research online it. we'll do it we'll try yeah. it Well, and was it was it yes. really it was really good yeah. i mean for okay. us it was good but others even if they think about yeah. it they might i don't know but they might like it but yeah but with food also you have to be a little experimental and yeah. you have yes. to be willing to kind of let's try it because yeah. if you don't try you don't yeah. know yeah. Yeah. i love foodies on the podcast so what about dinner now we are doing a lunch in istanbul yeah. having this amazing meatloaf as uh, uh jackson has described it so let's uh, talk about dinner where is dinner dinner is in bangkok okay. in china town yeah. so we went to this uh, the bangkok china town okay mm. they have michelin um, food kiosks there and it's not michelin restaurants it's not restaurants only even the small carts on the road they have michelin stars yes, yes. that that was really surprising you know it shows the quality of Yeah, food there yeah and so bangkok for dinner yeah. for sure and because you guys are such foodies and we've kind of traveled around the world yeah. with you uh, and we know where to have uh, all those three meals in a day if you could yeah. in different parts of the world but what about the uae uh, you both live in uh, abu dhabi yeah. and you've been in the uae for a very long time so what if you had to pick three places in the uae to have your breakfast lunch and dinner what would you pick where would you pick okay so for uh, breakfast i would take you to a um, indian um, a restaurant which is called sangam mm-hmm. for south indian south restaurant. indian restaurant in abu dhabi in abu dhabi mm-hmm. okay. which is famous for its um, dosas and vadas and idlis mm-hmm. uh, being from south india i, I could relate to it of course it. yeah of course and then um, that would be my breakfast, breakfast where you could go and order something called a mini tiffin which mm-hmm. has uh, small portions of each <laughs> and every uh, yeah. thing what they have on their menu yeah. for the day yeah. so you get to try without uh, ordering a single big meal yeah that's and, a south uh, indian your, breakfast yeah, so, yes. for you okay uh, that would be my breakfast for lunch we'll probably go for something fancy that's the at the sadia rotana uh-huh. they have a brunch at simsim every every saturday every saturday yeah every saturday and that's probably the only brunch that i've seen where they serve uh, caviar i've never seen a brunch that serves caviar okay nice yeah. i want to go there yeah, yeah. the food there is amazing. we usually don't go for like a lot, lot of brunches but yeah. this place is really worth going mainly for their lobsters okay? okay they have these blue lobsters and they are amazing okay and plus they so have so this is simsim and the rotana yes. delicious and, and yeah and then uh, another exclusive part is they have a steak covered with gold Oh yeah. And then you can Whoa. cut it to whatever. Come Plus on, we're have... in the UAE, right? <laughs> yeah. We can't escape Fancy. the gold. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I will take you to a uh, place in Abu Dhabi which is called uh, Bonani, okay. Ethiopian restaurant. I It's don't know Ethiopian, if you Ethiopian. Yes. yes. Okay. So So you um, eat in those on those yes. big plates. Yeah. yeah. So they have this uh, concept that uh, everyone sits yeah. around the table yeah. and then digs into the plate. Yeah. that's where my dinner would be okay yeah. fabulous we have some really <laughs> amazing places for all three meals mm-hmm. i am kind of really looking forward to going to the rotana oh, now and trying sim sim just for yeah. the caviar and uh, i mean Oysters. you can have caviar anywhere but you know having it as part of a brunch menu yeah. is yeah. A special yeah. yeah so let's talk about experiences and because you guys have been here pretty much all your life which yeah. is that one experience in the uae that you would highly recommend and uh, that people should do when they visit or even for people who are listening right now definitely visiting the uh, sheikh zaid grand mosque the grand mosque yeah. in abu dhabi there are there are a lot of places here yeah but then the grand mosque in abu dhabi something, is yeah. spectacular i think they have they have like a 24 karat gold uh, chandelier is there yeah, the carpet is the biggest um, knotted, carpet knotted carpet in the, in the world, world. Yeah. so you definitely highly recommend yeah. that when people yeah. visit or if people who are listening right now haven't visited the grand mosque that yeah. they should yeah. and yeah. because I, people basically I they come only it. to people come only to dubai they never yeah. come to abu dhabi yeah. you know yeah, yeah. no that's so, worth it yeah. it's absolutely worth it it's so so beautiful mm-hmm. actually yeah. so you know Of course we've been to many many places and I love the fact that you know you guys have special memories of a lot of places that I have special memories of as well including Uruguay. Yeah. <laughs> so now what is next on your travel uh list you know what is up there you know top of your list that you still want to tick mark. So 
uh, we want to visit the Baltic countries. We definitely want to visit Latvia and Lithuania. We want to uh, visit Egypt as well. Well, I wish you all the best and thank you so much for these fascinating journeys that you took us to. And I hope you get to go to all these places that are up there on your bucket list. Delaine and Jackson, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Thank you Mushmi, today. for having us here. This thank was you. wonderful. <laughs> and I wish you all the best and I hope you keep traveling and keep inspiring people to travel the world and see the world and get those amazing experiences. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to travel the world in new and exciting ways. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let us know what you thought of today's episode. Until the next time, safe travels and keep exploring. 